Hello! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and you're watching Blendtastics. This is going to be an unboxing from Linden Lion Greenhouse in New York. They have African violets. Um, they are someone I've never ordered from before, but I just saw recommendations. They have really nice pictures on their website, like the lighting's good, and I wasn't purchasing a mystery box or anything like that. What I am going to be unboxing are specific varieties that I selected, and then I also picked substitutions for some of them because that's what they suggested I do, simply because there may be a potential for some of them to be um, out of stock or unavailable. So let's get started. Um, so to begin with, they had an interesting label that I, it had just like a peel here um, sticker and I did and the whole thing came off. So there's nothing identifying. Well, that's the only remaining part, but I really like that because if you're doing unboxings like so many plant people are, um, it's just really nice to be able to remove that. Okay, so let's get going. All right, so I'm just going to cut this box open and see how they travel. Make sure you're up. Um, it's got some staples here that I'm going to have to... So that's kind of cool. We've got what looks like um, some ceiling um, insulation type. It looks like fur to me, but it's definitely not like the coloring. So we're just gonna take that off. And that's really thick. So this is winter time. Okay. Okay, so I believe that there are no substitutions. So this is what they look like. Very well insulated and there is a heat pack in here as well. So this is Louisiana Lullaby. Gillian. These are all standards by the way. King's Ransom. Oh my god, I, I had to have this. It was so beautiful to me. And Midnight Waterfall. So here is the heat pack and it is still warm to the touch. So as you can see, they really insulated this well. Um, I am not in a place where it's actively snowing, but I trust that if you were to order this, and it potentially sit on your front porch for a couple of hours, like it would be okay as long as that heat pack was still working. But like, look how thick and nicely insulated that is. So I'm gonna put this to the side and now I'm gonna go about opening these very carefully. So I'm going to put these to the side. I am going to start with King's Ransom because that's the one I'm most excited for. So I'm just going to cut along here. Or I might actually just tear them open. Wow, this is really nice leaves. Of course, the leaves are going to have to take a little while to like open back up because they have been. But like, look at that. It's really nice. So here you can see the leaves are very large, very, I can get it out of here and I create a pile of just garbage. So 
This is kind of just like paper. It's like almost like the stuff you put in Easter baskets. See, and it's a little bit damp. I wouldn't say it's wet. We've got a few more strands in here. Looks like we may be losing a leaf. I did that. Okay. So it'll just gently open on its own. This is King's Ransom. These are very large leaves. Looking at the center of the crown, I do have the beginning of a bloom stalk. If you can see right there, it's very small. It'll probably bloom within a month or two. This is a really nice plant. So on the actual packaging, there was a tag for it. It's right here. So they're already labeled. And I like, I prefer these as opposed to it being on the pot because as I repot, I can very easily just take that and it goes and travels along with the plant. So that is plant number one. This is our fatality. What I'm going to do so I don't confuse it with another one is I'm just going to place this in the soil for now and it may propagate um, in the soil. I actually might just take it out and put it in my propagation tray in my grow room. Next we have Midnight Waterfall and let's see. These have such beautiful thick leaves. Like I hope that I can allow conditions for them to continue that pattern. So I had better luck with this one it seems in getting it out. So once again the tag is right here on the outside so I'm just going to take that out. Add that to the pile. This has very unique veining. You can't really see unless the light is shining through the leaves. I'm going to try to be more gentle with this one so I don't lose a leaf. I prefer this paper over that, um, it almost looks like teddy bear stuffing. It's not um, cotton, it's like a synthetic material. This is much larger strands. So here we have it, Midnight Waterfall. And I'm looking at the center of the crown and it's really nice though none of these are actively blooming and none of these actively have blooms. It also has a very small bloom stalk forming there, which is really nice. That leaf is huge. Like, look how big that leaf is. So this is Midnight Waterfall. So she's gonna go right here I'm going to take all of our little garbage and just dump it right in here. Next, we have Louisiana Lullaby. I just love the name, um, honestly. And the like ombre effect of the flowers is also very attractive to me. And we actually do have a flower on this one. Beautiful leaves. Oh no, I'm pulling out all the soil. So we have really nice 
we have another bloom at the base and then we have this bloom here they seem to have traveled seem to have traveled pretty well see where the tag is I've got it right here Lastly, we have Gillian. And something you can kind of like consider is that I know people pick violets because of their blooms like people love African violets because of their flowers similar to the reasons why people like orchids and if you really want a violet that is going to bloom for you there's some things you can kind of take into consideration with one of those being the leaf size and somewhat shape. All of these are not variegated. Variegation is a place where it's lacking chlorophyll, so it isn't able to create energy for the plant. So with these, the entire leaf is able to make energy. So that will allow the plant more of an ability to put that towards either growing new leaves or also creating flowers so that's just something to take into account this one is really nice and healthy it has lighter green leaves than these these two are monsters like these two as in midnight's waterfall and king's ransom like these are probably going to be um on the larger side in terms of standards like they just are monstrosities this one does not have bloom stalks but it will i give these really nice lighting and whatnot and they will likely bloom for me within the next four to six months um, I like to repot them after a day or two. They actually don't need water, which is kind of nice because I have gotten some where they're just like so bone dry. Like the first thing that I want to do is water them. Um, but yeah, this one, I've never seen a violet with a leaf this large. Like I don't have the largest hands, but look at them. They're huge. They're gigantic. So I really like that about them. So these are going to be placed in Ziploc bags and kept away from all of my other plants. I previously ordered plants, specifically African violets, and I did test three out of the five and they were not from this seller that I just purchased from. And two out of the three that I tested did end up testing positive for INSV. So I think it's very important whenever you're purchasing violets to also factor in the fact that you may need to test for INSV. It's nothing against, you know, sellers. You need to think of it as a way to reduce um, potential contamination into your collection. Um, just because once your violets have INSV, there's no cure, they have to be destroyed. And that idea is really kind of alarming for people. So the opposite side of that is to take preventative and proactive measures. Whenever you do purchase African violets, 
the African Violet Society of America has really great articles in their magazines where they talk about the different ways that you can prevent the spread and ways to quarantine and I follow the tips that they are suggesting in their magazines. But that's just a word of caution because like these unboxings can be really fun and exciting and when you have a plant that looks really healthy regardless of where it's coming from I just think it's really important to test those plants and quarantine them until you know for certain that they're safe to be added in to your collection um, because it's a lot easier to take steps preventatively in isolating these plants and making sure that they don't have anything whereas being reactive and realizing that you do have an issue can be too late so um you know just keep that in mind um, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it. And if you'd like to see more of my content, be sure to subscribe. Thanks and have a great day. Goodbye.